from a pastor or church leader perspective, what does healthy oversight of these groups look like? So what are we encouraging pastors and leaders to do when trying to help these groups go on? Yeah, well, definitely having a plan, number one, like not only with launching the group, but mm-hmm. when you're going to end, what, what's next? Yeah. Like having that on the front end is, I would say, essential and crucial because the last thing you want to do is take people on, on a journey and yep. say, okay, what's what now yeah and so being able to have a game plan a pathway Mm -hmm. is is huge um also making sure that people are equipped um like again i'm not to plug it but like the group leadership training like making sure leaders understand yeah what they're walking into what the commitment is Mm -hmm. what it entails like what it means to be healthy yeah to lead a group um having healthy boundaries all all of those things are are crucial Um, within doing all of that because you want to set people up for success, not only the leader, but those that you're leading. And so just being able to be clear, setting people up, giving them a clear direction Mm -hmm. and pathway, I would say is very, very important. Yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking of the metaphor as you were, you know, talking about having a plan that sometimes we're like, you know, a mountain guide that leads people to the top of the mountain and it's, man, the view is amazing. And isn't this great? And then, you know, the group looks at you like, okay, how do we get down? And if you're the guide and you're like, Oh. Well, I don't know. Like I <laughs> yeah. just got you up. You're like, good luck. <laughs> and it's like a long ways down and it's scary to kind of know, well, here's some next steps. Here's mm-hmm. some ways you can use this in incorporating in another group or we can help you lead or start another one. I mean, just, there are a lot of different plans and that's part of what Emmanuel does and our group's team. Like, hey, yeah. we'll help you think through it. You don't have to come up with the plan, Yeah. but I, I think having a plan is crucial. A couple other things I think about in terms of overseeing these groups, I mean, it's, it some ways sounds trite, but it's so true. Like be praying for these leaders. Yeah. Mm. This is a tough kind of front edge, you know, pushing back the darkness kind of ministry. And so really letting those leaders know like, Hey, we're praying for you. Or when our staff meets, we pray for you, whether that's once a month or once a week, you know, whatever your rhythm is, just really covering those leaders in prayer and and then I think it means the world if, if you're checking in and if it's, it doesn't have to be the, the lead pastor, but yeah. I think someone on staff that just once a month calls up and says, Hey, how's your group going? Anything you need? How can I yeah. support you? Because this is also a ministry that, I mean, let's face it at most churches, if there's a couple of groups running at a time, that's great. Mm-hmm. But that means there's only a couple of leaders that feel like, man, I'm carrying this burden for mm-hmm. this group. And to just communicate to them, Hey, I, I know you're doing something that's yeah. maybe not as widespread in our church, yeah. but I got your back. I'm here for you. Yeah. Just reminds them they're not alone. And yeah. I think that's a huge role that we can play as leaders. Yeah. yeah. I think um, a couple other just maybe smaller things is like thinking through the budget and giving some resources to this could be helpful. You know, I even think um, how cool it is if, you know, a leader gets a call from a pastor and is like, hey, I want you to take your group out to coffee this yeah. week and here's a coffee card. Or, hey, I got you some pizza. Maybe you feed this, you know, you feed your group. And I'm not saying, you know, if your church is running 50 groups, like that's going to be tough. Um, but you probably got a big budget. If you have, <laughs> if you have groups going, but, right, right. Uh, <laughs> it's not the worst, <laughs> not the worst use, but I think that sort of thing may be small, but can really communicate. I have your back. I'm for you. I see the work that you're doing and this is important ministry. Um, you know, and two, I, I think something as simple as like, you can use this room at our church. Like, it's okay if you use the facilities. Absolutely. Like, um, I think some churches might be afraid, um, of confidentiality or some other issues that might come up, but just saying like, hey, when do you want to run your groups? Okay, great. Tuesday nights at seven. We have this room open. Why don't you guys take this mm-hmm. room this week uh, or you know, for the next few months? And I think just things like that, small things, thinking through the needs that a group might have and even understanding how emotionally weighty these can be, yeah. thinking, how can I serve these people? And it's interesting too, because just as I'm talking about that, we think about that as pastors and leaders all the time. Like, I know this family's hurting. What are some ways we can use some of the funds that we have just to be a blessing to them. Yeah. And think through that way too with your group leaders. Keep along with you.